answer is yes. Most elderly patients are at high cardiovascular risk due to their age alone. The PROSPER study looked at elderly patients aged 70 to 82 years old with cardiovascular risk factors and or cardiovascular disease. It compared pravastatin 40 to placebo. This study shows a decrease in coronary heart disease death and non-fatal MI by 2.1% over three years. This translates into a relative risk reduction of 15% and a number needed to treat of 48 in three years. Bottom line is, if you think that your patient has at least a three to five year life expectancy and is at high risk of cardiovascular disease, a statin should be considered. Not always. The first thing we need to do is rule out other causes, including trauma, exercise, or infection. A recent Canadian Cardiovascular Society consensus statement recommends that if the CK is elevated but is less than five times the upper limit of normal, a statin can be continued. The CK level should be repeated in six to 12 weeks or if the patient develops symptoms. If a patient does have symptoms, hold the statin until other causes are ruled out. Once the CK is equal or less than the upper normal limit and the patient has no symptoms, the statin can be restarted if the case was mild, switched to another statin, or the dose lowered. The bottom line is that statin use may be continued with monitoring in some cases of elevated CK without patient symptoms. This is debatable. If the pain is tolerable, you can take a watch and wait approach. The symptoms may resolve on their own as there are other reasons for muscle aches. If the pain isn't tolerable, the Canadian Cardiovascular Society consensus statement suggests holding the statin and restarting, switching to another statin, or lowering the dose once the patient's pain is gone. The bottom line is, statin use can continue with monitoring if a patient has tolerable myalgia without CK elevation. Most patients with true statin-related myopathy will tolerate another statin. Therefore, it is suggested to switch statins, start at a low dose, and titrate slowly. Remember, there is no evidence that non-statin lipid-lowering drugs improve cardiovascular outcomes. Only patients with diagnosed rhabdomyolysis should never take a statin again. The bottom line, if a patient experiences myopathy, change to another statin, start at a low dose, and titrate slowly. general consensus that high-dose statin therapy compared to low-dose therapy increases myopathy. However, there is limited evidence to support this statement. Large clinical trials that compared high-dose to moderate or low-dose statin therapy have not consistently shown an increased risk of myopathy with high-dose therapy. The one exception is simvastatin. Following the SEARCH study, simvastatin 80 is no longer recommended unless a patient has been taking it chronically with no muscle problems. The bottom line is that high-dose statin therapy does not appear to increase the risk of myopathy when compared to low or moderate dose therapy. It depends. In appropriately selected patients, depending on their risk for cardiovascular disease, and their values and preferences, statin therapy could be initiated and titrated to Canadian Cardiovascular Society targets. In most cases, this is either an LDL cholesterol of less than or equal to two, or a 50% reduction in LDL cholesterol from baseline. A good approach is to start with the lowest available statin dose and titrate every six to eight weeks until the LDL cholesterol target is reached. The starting dose of the statin gives the greatest relative reduction in LDL cholesterol, approximately 20 to 40%. The bottom line is that a patient may reach their LDL cholesterol targets with a high or low dose statin. Cardiovascular diseases are the leading cause of death in adult Canadian men and women. All people with known vascular disease should be treated with statins. As well, those at high risk benefit from preventive statin treatment. 
Not sure who's at risk? There are many easy to use cardiovascular risk calculators available on paper, smartphones, and even your EMR. The bottom line is, statins save lives, and that's no myth.